Righto. Before we slip into this video, don't forget to go over to Patreon and, and check out all the different support levels that you can sign up to there. Any support is much appreciated. Um, within Patreon, I've got uh, a mentor tier there as well. So if you're looking for someone to mentor you, there is that uh, available. Um, over at my website, zebrashunting.com, I've also got online course for anyone that's sort of trying to get out there and, and get amongst the deer or you've been trying yourself already and you haven't had any success, that course will get you on the right track. Now, if that's not enough for you, I, I do uh, group courses as well, so for hunter education, so don't forget to hit me up. Um, hope you enjoy this video and uh, there's some really good footage, so stick around to the end. Right, uh, here we are. You might recognize this fella. Joe's back with me for round two. We're, um, we're hiking in in the daylight this year, so swapped it up a little bit from last year. Realised I was pushing a few people a bit too too much, um, driving up in the dark and then uh, walking in the dark and setting up camp, you know, around about midnight. And anyway, it's too big a day for most people that are travelling, so now I've swapped it to meet me at lunchtime sort of thing at home and travel up here in the early afternoon and then walk in and get camp set up and get comfortable and hopefully get an afternoon glass in and start spotting some animals. But... Anyway, we'll see what we can uh, turn up in the next three days. So stick with us and uh, we'll see how we go. Right, I've just made it into camp. It's about 3.30, so we've got about an hour and a half of light left. So instead of mucking around and setting up camp, just uh, stashed it underneath my fly, grabbed the essentials, and we're going to go out and spend the hour and a half hunting, um, because that's why we're here. If we wanted to sit around in camp and all the rest of it, we just do that back at home, where you can have a, a bit of a, a cracker and some cheese and a beer. So we're in here to hunt, so that's what we're going to go do. Joe spotted this fairly fresh rub, around right about nearly 800, 900 metres, so. It's a good little spot. So a calf has already moved through with this group. It's a hind in the centre picture, which I think it belongs to. The calf belongs to. We've got a young stag coming in, and there's another deer there as well. So they've got a fair group, four. And a young fella, not what we're looking for. Babysitter. What's this other deer doing right there? See it moving around in the bushes. Looks like a yearling. Here it comes. See how much darker that stag is compared to the hind. Take give away when you're glassing. So 
So it looks like it must be a mature hind with their calf, which has already gone through to the left. Last year's calf, or yearling, and a, a young stag in that. And a, I'm going to say he's probably not quite 20. That could be a calf coming back, unless she's got twins. It's quite regular, you'll see calves doing donuts, so it wouldn't surprise me if it was out front and now it's circled back around. Pretty early, we've just spotted a hind and, and a yearling bedded up, and we think we've got more deer bedded beside them. But we're going to change the angle to get a look at them and see if it's a stag or not. Yeah, that's the one you want. So, quite regularly on a moonlit night like last night, you'll find deer bedded at daylight, and they usually get up and feed and then move beds, and I think this is exactly what's about to happen. There's two more deer, one is definitely a stag, but it's got no antlers. Straight down there. See that little clearing? See him down in there with my eyeball? Oh no, we've got a few deer going on here. Let's do the old panoramic. Yeah, I reckon it's that mongrel stag from last year. One there. Looks like a big pregnant hind, doesn't it? Look at the big belly on her. So it's late May. It's about when I expect to see calves on the ground.
So generally, when the hinds are ready to carve, they, they go off on their own. And, um, yeah, so you won't see a lot of hinds together at carving. They'll be all sort of off doing their own little thing, and then they'll sort of let their calves grow out a little bit before they sort of bring them back into the mob. But Sambra aren't a big uh, group deer or a herd animal, so you generally don't see heaps of them together unless you're on that farm fringe stuff where it can be all different. But these forest deer, they don't overpopulate and they, and they don't um, hang out in large groups. So we're spotting deer left, right and centre this morning, but just nothing big yet. Um, I've just come up to a, one of my little spots I like to sit. It's a glass into another area. And I sat here last night. And I'll just show you what gave me a startle. Can you see it? Decent sized brown, I'd say. So, we've had a pretty productive morning, we've seen at least a dozen deer, but none, none of what we really want. One big old mongrel that seems to be hanging around, but, um, one young stag. But a lot of the hinds are individual and sort of spread out a fair bit. So I'm guessing they're ready to drop calves. I haven't seen a calf yet, so it's about that time of year where they do drop their calves. But just um, just for a little bit of info, last night was quite moonlit, and um, the deer were all bedded at daylight this morning. So they they sort of get confused with that um, that moonlight. Uh, they can't really, I don't think they can tell between daylight and uh, moonlight and so yeah they were actually bedded down when we were first able to glass but as soon as it starts to get light up they get and they start feeding so something to remember next time you're hunting a really moonlight night the, the mornings are usually fairly productive afternoons sometimes can be a bit slow yeah, the mornings are normally pretty good. So um, I had had a bloke contact me uh, a few weeks ago to sort of have a bit of a chat about uh, wounding wounding deer and 
he'd, he'd um, hiked in and, and wounded a deer in where I go and he was a bit upset as you always are and he was asking me for advice and anyway um, we had a good chat about it and uh, he goes oh when are you going back in there next I said oh shortly and he goes oh well, do you, if you don't mind I'll I'll send you a link of where I reckon he is. Um, can you just keep your eye open? So, been uh, trying to pay attention down in there this morning, and um, I've got a bunch of crows down in there. So, a bit later on, I'm going to have a sweep through there and just see if we can find what those crows are on. Hopefully, I can find this stag for this mutt, this bloke. So. Um, yeah, if not, I don't know what those crows would be hanging in there for, but I think there's something dead in there. It's just whether or not I can find it. Righto, mate. Uh, thanks to Joe's bloodhound nose, which picked up a dead scent. What? A couple hundred metres? 200 up? yards 200 up the hill. Yeah. And we did hear crows earlier down in this direction. And uh, we've pushed down and we've looked in the area, you said, kept Joe up top sniffing. And I've got down in here. Now, I didn't sniff anything because I got a bit of a blocked nose, <laughs> but I heard a bit of a buzz. I could smell it from I, about, you know, when you started whistling. Yeah. From about, I stopped there because like, I can smell it real, so oh, it's pretty yeah. strong here. Yeah. And then you started whistling. Yeah. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I actually put one up. Just, oh, did, did you hear it run off? Oh, really? Yeah, it was bedded just up, huh. only 50 metres up. I didn't did you get really, a look, didn't you I, look, No, I didn't really see it. A stag because yeah. there's a heap of fresh stags already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I heard a bit of a buzz and I went, oh, I've heard that buzz before. So I just kept circling around, circling around. Then I got a little whiff, and I just see an antler tip sticking up. So anyway, mate, we found it for you. It's a, not a bad deer, um, so I think you'll be happy with it. Yeah, he's a nice deer. Guessing that's your shot, mate. Way too far back, but anyway, that happens. Bit better than 27, mate. Yeah, real nice deer. He must have stayed low in the gully. spotted a stag he wasn't I don't think he was very big but I'm just making sure there's nothing else with him yeah right eh? we're um just moving camp it's uh, about nearly three o'clock um, we're moving because Saw a bunch of deer there today, and we feel like we sort of saw some the majority of what's there. Plus, we found this, you know, big dead stag. So we sort of figure the big dominant boys not not going to be there. So we're going to move a bit downstream, see if we can get onto some fresh fresh country and a few more deer. Hopefully, the bigger boys are still alive. When there's a couple of you, don't sit together. Spread out a bit, changes the angles, and you're, you're covering more ground.
Fresh start to this morning. Wake you up for sure. <laughs> so we've just um, just crossed the river at first light, and um, we're going to hunt up the other side here. Uh, had some pretty wild wind come through last night. Sprinkle of rain. It looks like it's going to rain on and off today. So we'll just see how how it holds up. So we've been bush stalking a bit this morning. The wind was a bit wrong. It blew from the south a bit this morning. Uh, after the initial real calm start to the day, yeah, the wind was a bit wrong for us uh, and opposite to the forecast. So we just sort of stuck with our plan and um, we did bump one deer that we didn't get a look at. And um, we've just bumped behind her calf and last year's calf, like, you know, yearling size sort of thing out of out of the sun out of here but we have spotted a couple of hinds across where we were expecting to, to be after that we had some pretty wild wind last night so i expected them to be down in the scrubby gullies but and it's sort of cleared up a bit now I expect the deer to be moving up again so we're sort of making our way up this system glassing across into the thicker stuff and then also hoping for deer to be moving up into the sun but it's getting to be late morning now so it's sort of probably starting to bed up a little bit but we'll keep uh, glassing and see what what else we can turn up Finding quite a few individual hinds this morning. I haven't really seen any calves yet, so I'm guessing they're all ready to pop. We've just been sitting here having our lunch and I was um, we're just chatting and I was looking at a shadow yarn just I don't reckon that was there before but didn't have my binos on me and so I asked Joe to borrow his binos and as soon as I put it up I thought oh that's an actual deer and it's got antlers and we, we've mucked around and it's actually a big old boy re regressing in his antlers massive body Got him at 400, but he's gone here behind some bush. So, this is his midday get up and move around. So, we're hoping he'll just mill around and maybe come back and uh, we get a shot. Oh, you need to kill it. Yep. Right, oh, we've just been sitting eating our noodles. I've been looking at this thing thinking that looks like a deer but I didn't have any binos on me and uh, turns out it's this big mongrel stag
baby. Just to make you more steady. I'll just sit in here and see. He's a cool deer, eh? He's old, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Real weird looking. Yeah. Quite laid back. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a cool deer. What about five, you say? 395, 400. He's, he's moving out. So we lost sight of him. I dropped down the spur to change the angle, hoping that we could get a Another shot and I, I found him again, but he's just moseyed over a little, a little rise. I think he's just switching beds, but he might just keep going where he is. It's real quiet up here and not many hunters get up here. So we gonna slip him behind him and see if we can uh, bush stock him. He's a pretty cool animal, so hopefully we can get him. Run! Keep going, he's got this big bluff to get through. Keep going, get in this gully. You must have a path down here. He's going down through the rocks. You see him? No. Down at the end of the bluff. I reckon he's going down into here. Well, they're not on the wall until they're on the wall. I think we got to about 30 yards from him and he was below us. I was expecting him to be above us. One big honk, a couple of bounds, and what I thought was a bluff that you couldn't get through, he got through it. Gone. Didn't even get a look at him. So we're just going to go back and see if we can find where he bedded. He'd, he'd moved into the shade. So as soon as it went shady, he was bedded up. I was expecting him to be above us in the shade. But no, he was below us. Basically at the same, maybe a little bit lower than I last saw him. So anyway, a bit of excitement for the Arvo. <sighs> anyway, it took us about half an hour to get onto him. And uh, yeah, so he was just switching beds from a very sunny face, which he would have enjoyed this morning. And then, uh, you know, now it's uh, it was about nearly two o'clock, he'd switched to the shady side. So pay attention to that when the weather's warm. It's like probably 18 or so degrees today. <sighs> anyway, so we've uh, just reviewed the footage and even we're now even more disappointed because he was such a cool deer. Big funny looking tops. Just cool. He was awesome. <laughs> anyway, now we've uh, ran, both ran out of water. We're still at probably five, six hundred metres above the river. And um, it's 2.30, quarter to three in the Arvo. So we're going to keep our height, cross through this gully and get on the next ridge and because they seem to be looking for shade, we're going to try and glass into the shady sides in the evening and hopefully they come out to feed. But yeah, you'll see him, he's pretty good. Old, unique, still living. Mm. We had him at what, 400 for a bit? Yeah. Um, didn't really have, we didn't have a good chance of a shot with him. No, we didn't, didn't have him. If I hadn't have, if I had have stopped eating my noodles whilst I was looking at the shape that looked like a deer, 
for five minutes and then I asked Jake to borrow the binoculars to check and it was a deer. Then he would have been dead. Then he would have been dead, but instead I was enjoying my noodles. <laughs> Look, were they good? They were good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'd rather have a deer on the ground. Anyway, that's, that's how it happens. And uh, if you can't laugh about it, you'll only cry. <laughs> So we've got a little bit of footage of him, um, so we can remember him. Oh, both of them! Oh, I just found the second one! Stop it! <laughs> That's cool as. I see you. Is it good luck? Does anyone know if it's good luck to be shat on the head by a possum? <laughs> really knock me out. You're a bit constipated, mate. You need to drink a bit more. Get off the dehydrated meals, buddy. What's he doing? Oh. Stop trying to poo on me. <laughs> That's filthy. Can you got my headlamp? I think it is a native one. <laughs> Hello, little fella. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a long nose like a native. Yeah, don't you reckon? It doesn't look like a... I don't think it's just a mouse mouse. What's yeah. his tail? Is his tail furry? Yeah, it is too. Hmm. It's definitely a native mouse. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, I'm starting to eat my nuts, little fella. <laughs> He's keen to get going. Oh, oh. Where'd he go? Ooh. Yeah. That's cool. Look at him hopping. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> right, eh? We were uh, last morning. Packed up. We've pretty much exhausted all across the river. So we're going to hunt up a big gully back to the Ute. And um, see if we can turn anything up in there. But... We didn't see anything in there late last uh, afternoon from the other side, so but the big uh, big moon was up, so maybe they were coming out later. But got a fair old load on today, so chest out for the hyperlight. Kinda might explain a little bit why we're not seeing any deer in this big gully. Got some hikers down in the bottom here. So, don't know where they are, but haven't heard any shots, but it's probably, if they've been in here as long as we have, probably stirred all the deer up by now. Right, eh? we're uh, three quarters of the way out and uh, we uh, we did run into a camp right down in the bottom there so that might explain why we weren't seeing deer where we thought we would late, late afternoon yesterday um, but yeah so we've we've broken the back of the big hill and we're nearly out so Joe's just sending a text message to his lovely wife no doubt we're gonna be home about four o'clock that's yeah. what I'm saying yep. yeah <laughs> so yeah so I hope you enjoyed the video um, don't forget to subscribe like make a comment I'll, I'll answer your comments and um, yeah 